Hello out there. Welcome back to episode 18 of Digging Through Dominoes. I'm your host, Terry Anderson. And in this podcast, we try to dig through the dominoes of our past so we can have a better future and a whole new game. Let's get to what I want to talk about. A couple of just weird things. This was nothing that I wanted to talk about or had planned on talking about today until a couple of things happened this weekend. The first one, I'm going to tell you the last one towards the end. It's pretty funny. It just happened a couple of days ago and it really got me to thinking about this whole thing, but I'm going to hold off on that one right now. This is about judgment. How we judge others, how people judge us, are you a judgmental person? And what does it mean? And what got me started on that track was I got this on my episode about how to find a trauma therapist. <laughs> I'm still laughing. Evidently, I I went back and I listened to the whole episode because of this comment. And the comment is, it's from Foxy Fox. In quotation marks, I like Jordan Peterson. And then Foxy Fox goes on to say, damn, I thought you were making sense before then, but had to forcibly blank my mind because ain't no way I'm taking mental health or life advice from anyone that has any respect for Jordan Peterson or his toxic victim blaming attitude. And that got me to wondering, what the heck did I talk about? What did I say about Jordan Peterson? I went back and I listened to the entire episode about how to find a trauma therapist to see why I would have mentioned Jordan Peterson. The reason I mis mentioned Jordan Peterson was I was talking about Bessel van der Kolk. What a wonderful, easy to understand person he is for the average layperson. He's he's absolutely amazing. And then I said, I like Jordan Peterson, but sometimes he's so academic it takes me a while to digest what he said. And then I went back on to Jordan I mean uh Bessel van der Kolk. So this comment elicited a response from another person. I said, thank you so much for your interaction, positive or negative. It helps the YouTube algorithm, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to deal with that. But someone asked me a question. How do you deal with them? When people say something and make, make such a quick, quick judgment, I mean, one name, and they're like, I'm out of here. And they said, how do you deal with that? Why don't you just get rid of that comment? Well, it brings up a really good topic that really has come, wow, full force in the last six, eight years, 10, I, I don't know. It's, you can be having a conversation and one word or one name pops up and they invalidate everything you said before. Like this person says, I thought you were making sense before then, but I had to forcibly blink my mind because ain't no way I'm taking advice from anyone that has respect for Jordan P Peterson or his toxic victim blaming attitude. And that made me think. They used the words victim blaming. Now, I, I do listen to Jordan Peterson. I listen to him quite a bit. Some of the things I agree with, some of the things I don't. This person evidently didn't want to go that far to see that I am not a one-dimensional person. I am a multi-dimensional person. And I do like Jordan Peterson. And the fact that this person put victim blaming. I've listened to so much of Jordan Peterson. You may see it as victim blaming. I see it as holding people accountable. And I can see why someone that wants to feel that they are a victim 
doesn't want to be held accountable because that role of victim in our society, unfortunately, seems to have become a much coveted role. Anyway, it got me thinking, you know, what is, why do people, why are people judging all the time with absolutely no clue as to the whys, the wheres, the background, or the totality of the person or the situation that they're judging? They just come to a very quick, very hasty, hastily made conclusion that it's crap and they're out of there. It's black or white thinking is what it is. So I looked up, I did some research on what a judgmental person is. And I came across some some pretty pretty interesting things. One of the things I want to say first of all is one of the things that really resonated with me through all of the research I did on judging and being a judgmental person, one of the things that was really kind of universal is that judging says a lot more about you than it does about the other person. And what that says is when someone judges you, it's not really about you, it's about them. Their own insecurities, limitations, and needs. It's kind of a power thing. It's like they're set up in this glass house. And if anyone comes near with a different opinion, a different look, a different background, a different childhood, a different way of doing things, a different way of arranging things in the house, a different way of whatever, and it's not their way of doing it, the other person is automatically wrong Because the person that's doing the judgment, the harsh judgment, is so insecure about themselves or something, some type of trauma in their lives they haven't dealt with that they cannot see any other way. So they cut it off and that situation is no longer valid to them. It's black or white thinking. It's evil versus self-righteousness. It's good versus bad. And there is no other answer for these people which is really unfortunate. And to tell you a story, I used to be one of those people, not quite as black and white, but yes, I had boxes. I had boxes that, okay, now, before I go into my boxes, let me tell you this. I am not saying in any way, if there's an ax murderer across the street or a pedophile, or something like that going on. I mean, that's just downright unmoral. And morality is on a spectrum as well. But I think in our social norms, we know. All right, a murderer, yeah, he may have had reasons for it, but uh, he can go to prison. A child molester, in my opinion, because I have very personal experience with that, Those are some pretty messed up people. I don't want to judge them. They've got their issues to deal with, but they're also not anyone I want to be around. So that's something that I can make and say, you know, I think that's messed up. I don't know the whole story, but that's what it is. So I used to have these boxes that, and it, I was very, very insecure I didn't feel like I have worth. Even talking to you now, I don't feel like I have worth. And this incident I'm going to explain to you a little bit later in this podcast episode will show you what I did because I I felt I was out of control of my life, how disastrously it went, and the unexpected ending that really made me start thinking. So are you a judgmental person? Let's go into that. First of all, do you want to know? Are you judgmental? Are you too critical? Are you losing friends? Are people blinking you out because they don't want to hear what you have to say? You're going to say the same thing over and over. You're going to be judging someone 
that you know nothing about other than a rumor or gossip. Oh my gosh, the internet, social media has been, been horrible about this. It's pitted society against itself. And when you do that, there's no way we can make progress. When we have groups of people hating other groups of people, you can't do it. You cannot make progress. My opinion only. So we'll go on from there. But are you a judgmental person? Here's some tips to kind of find, help you find out. Are you one of those judgmental people that people cannot wait to stop talking or to get away from? Overly judgmental people frequently make snap decisions about a person over one action. And they're sort of moral evaluations of that person, that institution, or whatever. It's, it's a moral evaluation of these people. Because they have trouble accepting that there's any truth rather than their own. They don't think that there are other possibilities. It either has to be in the box or out of the box. There are no other possibilities. There are no other ways. And these people, they have trouble accepting things the way they are. Like my grandson's gay. I know he's gay. I accept my grandson. I love my grandson. I have cousins that are gay. I love them. I have friends that are gay. A whole community put me in there. I love them. I'm not judging anyone. That's not my place to judge. But a lot of people will do that and say they're condemned to hell. Well, you may want to stop and think about that because you're not the judge, jury, and executioner. I don't know. I have a hard time with that. But they they don't think of any possibility abilities that could have made a person say snap like me let's use me as an example they won't think of any possibilities other than I left my family that's what they're going to judge me on that's what I have been judged on they're not going to stop and think was I part of the reason she left did I help her break were my actions so repulsive that I that she just couldn't take it? Did she have issues, childhood issues? What was going on with her that had this seemingly woman who had it together on the outside break? They're not going to go into any of that backstory. They're just going to say, hey, she broke. She's bad. That's happened to me. I'm living with it. You know what? That's fine. I've learned so much. And the people that judge me, well, I would say walk in my shoes. And a lot of the people that judge me are making a lot worse choices than I made. I'm not judging them for it. I'm just saying it's just funny the way that they do this. And when we get into this a little bit, um, it, it, just listen. Let's go with it. So these people also that make these quick eternal, fast judgments. They lack compassion. They divide people into groups. There are only two groups. You're either good, you're bad, you're righteous, or you're evil. That's it. Did I say two groups? Four groups. Flip, flip side of the coin, same thing, black or white. There's no in-between. And these people tend to have no desire to look beyond what they initially see, to see if there was something in that person's life, their social situation, their cultural situation that could have caused the situation that they're seeing. They're just making a snap judgment. The judgments are made quickly, like I said, without any desire to know the past or any situations that person may be in. And they don't make judgments to help the other person. They judge the other person or situation or 
society or whatever to remain in control. They have a fear, they have a lack of self-worth, and they need to feel they're in control and that they are, in fact, superior to that other person or situation. Also, another thing is most people judge because they need the constant reassurance that what they believe is true. Like I said, there's no deviation. There is no, there, there's a line down the middle. I looked in my kid's pantry upstairs today and they have a piece of blue tape going down the middle of the refrigerator and the middle of the pantry. I just look at my, you know, I think to myself, why are you doing that? But that's what people do. They may, they have this blue tape line, although it's not a blue tape line. It is a concrete wall and they have good on one side, righteous on one side, evil on the other side, bad on the other side. There's no in between. And that's to help them keep their, their, their feeling, their very fragile feeling of self-worth. They also, they see actions of a person such as I said earlier, of when I broke, they see actions of a, as a person as a definition of who that person really is. They don't stop to give anything, any thought to the backstory, and they cannot separate the action of that person from the person. They kind of put them together, they bind them together, gorilla glue them together, if you will. And they cannot, they don't have the maturity to separate those from actions and the actual person. And that's really unfortunate. I think that's where a lot of the suffering today comes from. I'm not saying that there is no moral spectrum. I'm not saying that there is no right or wrong. I'm saying these rash judgments are are not, in my opinion, correct. There's a whole lot more going on than just that one dimensional feature that you're seeing at the moment. Many people that are judgmental claim that their reality or their truth is the only truth, the only reality. Because like I said earlier, they don't have the maturity to differentiate actions from people situations from people or institutions. And they don't have the introspective ability to see that their judgment is caused by fear or trauma. You know, they have no idea that when they make these judgments, they're vocalizing their own fear. A lot of people will say it's anger. It's righteous indignation. You know what? Those are a lot easier to feel than fear. Fear is a very primal emotion. And for many of us, that rocks us to the core. Fear is really a hard one. So a lot of people want to judge, so they're a couple rungs up on that ladder. And they don't want to, they want to slip down any. They also, they don't stop to think how complex that person is or their life is. They know nothing about their living situation, like I said before, their history, their culture, the country they came from. They know nothing about anything. Just in their mind, it's right or it's wrong, and that's it. If someone has a view different than you, and like this comment that I have, you're a victim of something, this, this comment really makes me feel like this person likes playing the victim card. Jordan Peterson, is, in my opinion, is not toxic in any way. He's something that's, in my opinion, very well needed. And you may disagree with me, and that's fine. Remember, that does not define you. Your, your disagreement with me does not define you. And my liking to listen to Jordan Peterson, and whether I like him or don't like him, I do get value from his videos, that does not define me as a person. 
That's just one aspect of me. We are multidimensional creatures. The overly judgmental person's judgment of others or situations doesn't evaluate who they're judging. It evaluates themselves. What it says is something about that subject, something about that person, something about that action is bringing up something that scares me. I'm afraid of or makes me feel like I'm inferior. That's a really sad place to be in my estimation. They also tend to jump to conclusions. Oh, that guy has a blue truck. He must be an idiot. That person has a red truck. They must be an idiot. So they jump to conclusions and they don't take the time to do any research or to gather any basic facts. Their judgment is made and there's no changing it. And we have to remember that judgment in itself and judging other people has a root cause. And that root cause is keeping the judgers busy and distracted so they don't have to look at their own mistakes, their own living situation their own problems, their own trauma. If you judge someone else, that takes the blame off of you. So you don't, you don't have to, you you don't have to look at yourself. You can just judge them and feel superior. Get a, get a, get a, a bit of a kick of an ego boost there. So because, you know, the over, over judgmental person lacks that maturity and that ability to see people as multidimensional. They have to put them in that box, that good box, that bad box, that evil box, that reprobate box, that self-righteous box, that righteous box. They have to do that to keep their world in order because they are in chaos. They have no idea why. And it's really sad when I stop to think I used to be like that. I have, I've, I have gained so much compassion over the last 10, 15 years. It's unbelievable. And I look back and and realize I am nowhere near the person that I used to be. Thank goodness. Thank goodness I can't read or I can scroll through Facebook and see a post I don't like and keep going without the need to write something toxic on one of my friend's Facebook posts, they can, they can believe what they want to believe. But the root of judgment is fear. And the root of judgment is keeping us from looking at ourselves in any part we may play. Because overjudgmentally, people are generally threatened by the ones that they judge. They feel the need that every person, every situation, everything needs a label of good or bad, black or white, righteous, evil. And it's a compulsion. It's like, you know, guys, I guess it's not self-evident. I guess if you're stuck in that mindset, you're so stuck that you can't come back and see and really evaluate or you're afraid to evaluate exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're seeing, exactly what someone else is saying. You don't want to evaluate it because you're right, no matter what. That's no way to live because, like I said, you're losing friends, you're losing family. You have people blanking out halfway through a conversation because they're hearing the same stuff. You know, they won't see or tolerate any grays. To them, grays don't exist. Grays don't are messy. They don't fit into a box. And anything you can't put in put into a box and put a stamp of approval or disapproval on, it doesn't work in their world. If that's you, I would ask you to evaluate, sit back and say, "Whoa, do I do that?" I know I did it because I tell you what, things change when you change your perspective, a lot of things change. All right, let me go back to just differentiate and make sure that everyone knows that I'm not speaking about normal judgment. I'm not speaking about, should I run into the middle of that fire over there? 
Should I let my kid take candy from a stranger? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that have a judgmental personality, an overly judgmental personality disorder, not your average, should I walk in that broken glass or should I walk through the fire? That's not what I'm talking about. So don't even go there if you're going there, please. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about was if you're over judgmental, you focus on specific traits of an individual or corporation, an institution, whatever it may be. And again, you fail to see that it's a multidimensional situation and not one dimensional. That's, I think, where a lot of this comes in fear of losing control. Fear of what you might find out. Fear that you may like someone or the inability the, and the immaturity to see that everything is multidimensional. You cannot just label a whole class of people bad, a whole class of people good. You can't do that. That's wrong. In my opinion, I'm going to say it in my opinion because I know I'm going to get some backlash. With overly judgmental people, their own trauma compels them to judge others. Because when they judge others, as I said earlier, it keeps them from looking at themselves. It keeps them from looking at what's haunting them. And it kind of keeps them up on a pedestal, making them feel like they're better than someone else. Often, overly judgmental people will want to fix or improve things to disguise their lack of self-worth. Or they may say, say, Or they may say things like, hey, I can do that for you. Let me do that for you. Here, let me help you with that. It There again, it gives them in their minds the step up, why they're annoying the heck out of everyone else. They don't have the capacity to realize there are different ways to do things. Everyone's not the same. Everyone has different lives to lead. Everyone has different levels of comfort and their level may not be another person's level. And they judge them for that. They judge them for being whatever, when it's really the judgers, it's on the person making the judgment because they don't, they can't fathom that anyone is different than them unless they're bad. And that just gives them an ego boost. They cannot stand to think that people think differently. People solve problems differently. People live differently. They feel that if they acknowledge that, that somehow bleeds onto their righteousness or their self-worth. You know, when you constantly are telling someone how to do some dif- something differently, that they you can help them, that I'll help you do this. And it's not out of a, a well-meaning way. It's out of a judgmental way because the person judging doesn't like it. I can help you do this. I'll do this. Here, let me do that. Let me stir the pancake batter in the the different direction because the direction you're stirring it isn't going to work. With all of that, nowhere in there does it say that what they're talking about needs fixing, except for the person that's judging. They're intolerant. Overly judgmental people are intolerant of others different from them because, as I said, Being judgmental, overly judgmental is a defense mechanism. Judging is a way to subdue other people. So the one doing the judgment can protect their extremely fragile ego. You know, when you think about it, it's really sad, isn't it? It's, that must be really hard. And it was a hard way to live. You know, I, I live in a very clicky area. And I remember a blog post I wrote way back when I was able to write some of the bad meds they had me on when I was misdiagnosed kind of took that ability from me, which pisses me off. But I wrote a, I wrote a piece that was about living in this town that we live in and how the people are very judgy. They're very, they have to protect their image at all costs. 
And, you know, I guess even back then I could feel it, I could see it. But now in the years and everything I've gone through and then dealing with my homeless son, meeting the homeless, having them help me, having them have compassion on me. I have, I don't know how many people in my phone, my phone, when they call me or when they text me, they only text me and it says, knows Joshua, that's my son. They would text me pictures. They would text me and say they just saw him. They would text me so he could call me. That was so eye-opening for me. And then to hear people just diss the homeless when it's not their problem, really. It is the probably problem of the city, the government, the state. That's not, they're not handling things correctly. So there are huge, huge realities here. They're so multidimensional that you cannot just say, oh, they're homeless, they're bad. Well, my son was homeless. He wasn't bad. My son was a genius, very talented, very artistic. I'm not saying that because, you know, he's my flesh and blood. I adopted him at birth. Yes, he was my son, but that I'm still being very objective when I speak of Joshua that way. I think that goes away around along with the mental illnesses he had. A lot of times it's overly judgmental people, even when they're putting someone down or when they're judging them or they're saying they're all evil or they're all reprobate or they're all going to hell or they're all pigs or they're all whatever you want to use. They're, they're putting these people down because they have such a low sense of self-worth, but it doesn't help their self-worth go up any you know, if they would just kind of change the way they look at things and may, maybe try to see around the corner a little bit in another dimension of whatever situation it is, it might actually improve their outlook and give them a more positive look on life. You know, it's just really sad that they judge other people only to get an ego boost. And that, that's just, for me, it's, it's a very sad situation. Okay, we're almost done here with how to see if you're a judgmental person. And I'm going to tell you my, my story that I still am thinking of and I cannot believe. Another, another sign that you're a judge, a judge, overly judgmental person is if you're conspiracy minded. I'm not saying conspiracy, um, how do I say this, conspiracy aware, but you're consumed with it. You're overly judgmental because you don't have that self-worth. So you have to prove all of these evil things exist in the world. And I'm not saying there's not evil in the world. So please don't get me wrong. But you have to prove and go to the fringe of that to feel that you're superior because you feel so worthless. And, you know, they're not conscious of the fact that fact, the only fact that they're conscious of, or not really conscious of, but what bothers them is they can't, they, they have to at all times, put everyone and everything in a box. They, like I said, they don't see black or, I mean, grays, they see only black or white, there are no grays, there are no extenuating circumstances. That's just the way it is. Ugh. Okay, this last one is a quote that I'm going to read. And it's just an unknown quote. So I don't know who to attribute it to, but it's judgment is often a confession of ignorance. We're really good lawyers for our own mistakes, but very good judges for the mistakes of others. Okay, so I think that needs applause. Let me see if this is applause here. I don't know. Yay! I love these buttons. They're so much fun. <laughs> All right, here's my story. This is what happened to me this weekend. I have not been feeling my best emotionally. I've been having a very difficult time because I feel I'm very confined. I feel like I don't have a life. I feel I'm 60 years old and my life is just slipping by me. I have all these things to do that I want to do. I have all these things on my bucket list and I want to get out there and do them, but I don't have anyone wanting to do them with. My son and I take trips, which are remarkable. But I'm talking about, you know, you're sitting inside eight o'clock in the summer and, and the sun is still up and you know there's nothing to do. Well, 
I had got I had gotten myself really in a funk over that. When in reality, there's a lot of things to do, and I'm going to start doing these things. I have a lot of friends that are musicians, so I'm going to be going to their events. I'm going to do things. I'm planning. Um, I'm trying to plan my next birthday, and you know, I let everyone know it was going to be a solo trip, and I'm going away on my birthday and Mother's Day, so it's not a hassle for anyone in this household. And so I actually am looking at going to Greece. So that might be something really, really cool. But what happened was I started feeling so bad. I thought, you know, I know there's one thing I can control right now, and that's my motorcycle. So I looked at the weather and the weather was in the 80s. And it said it was going to get down up to about 100, about four o'clock. So I get all my gear on, I get my stuff on, I get the cameras on the bike, which I'm going to have a video of the bike ride as much as I can. I'm editing it right now. So I'm out there on this ride and I start, you know, I, I was going to say, I was going to say the first thing I sh- that should have been a telltale sign was I was confused. I wasn't sure which way to go. I couldn't find the right ro- road. But that can't be a telltale sign of heat exhaustion or heat stroke because you're confused. That's one of the symptoms. You're confused. I didn't know where I was. I was only going to be out for maybe 45 minutes on my bike and capture some some great B-roll and some footage, you know, down the river, up the river. I was out there for over three hours and I got freaking lost. And I ended up at a red light not even 10 minutes from my house. I've been there a million times. I didn't know where I was. And I was getting so hot. And I pulled over into the shade, got off my motorcycle, turned it off, turned my cameras off. Except I think I had the camera on my my helmet still going because I can hear some audio of what happened next that, that is still with me today. I'm sitting there and I was in dire straits. I could have died, I'm told, by very angry doctors. All of a sudden, a motorcycle rolls up. It was a sports bike. And this man gets off. I could see, you know, he had a helmet like mine, a full face helmet. He gets off. He takes his helmet off and I look up at him. And I notice immediately he has prison tattoos on his face, his neck, his arm. He's heavily tattooed. He's got piercings, I believe. I remember. You know, things are still real patchy from that. So here's this guy that looked or could look pretty scary. But I saw his eyes and his eyes were compassionate. He said, hey, are are you okay? I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay at all. I'm not doing well at all. I feel nauseous. I feel, I had goosebumps, which I didn't know, I didn't know was like a sign of heat stroke. I had all of these things. And he went in and bought me water. I said, I don't have any cash. I don't ride with cash generally. And he went in and bought me several waters he came out, called 911 for me. He said, he said, I'm staying here until they're here. Well, about that time, I think after the first water he got me, a police officer drove by and, and said, hey, do you guys need help? What's up? Are you okay? And I said, you know, I've got help on the way. I'm going to be fine. Help's on the way. So the police officer drove off and the guy next to me, I'm not going to mention his name in this episode, he said, um, that's really good. He left because I have an ankle bracelet on and I can't have contact with the police. And I'm like, oh, dude, that would have sucked, which I don't think they would have. Would they give him up like a, a mark if he's helping someone? I, I don't know. So I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking of the situation. And all I can see is the compassion in his eyes and he's watching me. He's evaluating me. So he calls 911. It, it's pretty much determined I needed an ambulance and no one was going to be able to get there and get me in time with my motorcycle and everything. So 
he calls 911 for me. He's looking at me. He's telling them all of my symptoms. He gave them his name. He He's saying, yes, she has goosebumps. Yes, she's extremely hot. Yes, to all of these things, except this is the one I think is the coolest thing of all. My Korean skincare and all the stuff I do to torture my face is working. They said, how old is she? And he looked over at me and he's looking at me. He says, I think she's about 45. And I said, uh, no, I'm 60. And he's like, what? So I thought that was funny, but he stayed with me. When the ambulance was there, he was answering the questions of the EMTs. He was helping get all of my stuff. He was gathering things. He took my GoPros off of my bike for me and put them in my bags and locked them. This guy that a lot of people may have run from, that obviously has had trouble in the past, had the compassion to help a complete stranger that was in danger of probable or possible death by heat stroke. You know, I feel I feel like an idiot with the whole heat thing. People are really dogging me on Facebook and stuff. Did you know it was whatever? You know, the heat rose a lot quicker than than any of the weather apps said that, that it was going to. And I haven't ridden in about a year because of some health issues. So I haven't ridden and I was out there and it just crept up on me. And here I have these people making me feel like crap or trying to make me feel like crap. And others are very, very encouraging. But I keep thinking about the guy that stopped with the prison tattoos and the ankle bracelet who has an 11-year-old son. He stopped to help a woman that was in trouble. He didn't steal from me. I could see in his eyes he had compassion. I know he has a good heart. I know he has a troubled past, but I'm betting with what the compassion that he showed me that day, my bet's on him, that he's going to come out of this okay. So that's sort of the story I wanted to tell you. I mean, it keeps going through my mind like a movie. I keep seeing him stop. I see his eyes. I see him bringing water. Then at one point he got an even larger water and he said, you need to pour this water on your head and down your back. And I know the EMTs got there and they're asking him, you know, what sort of interventions had happened. He said, well, I had her drink, drink water and then I bought water and I had it, her pour it on her head and on her back and every, and they said, wow, that's great. Poured it on my jeans, poured it, you know, so I was soaking wet when I got home. But I got in the ambulance and I was talking to them and I just, you know, they were saying, this is what the gentleman said. Is this correct? Is this correct? It was all correct. And he was, as soon as the ambulance got there and I was okay and my daughter was there and Jeff was there to pick up my bike, he was gone. It was like an angel in the night and a guardian angel that came to save me. But what he did was really, really make me step back and look about the look at the way I make judgments. Am I over judgmental? No, I don't think I am. In the past, yes, I was very over judgmental. I, I think part of that was was kind of in the motherhood thing and wanting to pre- protect my kids. And, and I really, I did in some ways and other ways I went way overboard. But I, I just am so thankful. I am so thankful. You know, I, I can't imagine if he had tried to help someone else. I know that we've had employees before that have had long stringy hair and just look like, you know, they were going to rob you. Drive up next to someone and those people put their windows up because they looked at them and they you know, they thought they looked creepy. We all do that. We all have to make judgments to protect ourselves. But I guess what I'm trying to say is we need to look at people's hearts. We need to get to see the realities and realize 
nothing we see in this world is one-dimensional. Nothing is going to fit in a box, good or bad, black or white, righteous, doomed. We can't make that judgment. And I think the world would be a better place, and I think people would be a lot happier in their lives and with themselves if they would stop putting judgment on other people and maybe look inside themselves and see what's going on. So that's it, guys. That's what I have for today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me through episode 18. My gosh, we're soaring. Oh, another piece of news. I am getting my certification to be a trauma specialist, trauma counsels, what? A trauma coach, trauma support coach, life trauma, whatever it is. So I'm, I'm, I've made that decision. So that's really cool. And I'm really excited about that. And editing this video of my um, kind of doomed ride, but very uh, enlightened ride. I hope you guys got something out of this. Please subscribe. Please give me a good review. We want to get this spread out. You know, I need to support myself. I need to make it to Greece for my birthday, but you know, that's going to take a lot of stuff. But I want to help people. I want to touch people that have gone through the things I've gone through. And there's one woman I'm working with right now and she wouldn't have gotten help. And I I can't, you know, I can't believe it. Had she not come across my podcast and some of my videos, she would still be waiting to get help. And she's so excited that she's been into a therapist and she's getting help. And I am so proud of her. And it's not a pat on my back. It's like, wow, all the hell I've gone through can benefit someone else. And you know what? Yours can too. So here's to helping the ones we can. You guys have a freaking rocking week and hopefully I'll have a fragmented Friday up on Friday. I'll see you later.